Last week, I put out my biggest comebacks video, and one of the comments suggested that I did a reverse version of that, biggest falls from grace, aka queens that during their time in the competition had a streak of high placements that bled into low placements, often resulting in eliminations. This video won't be a ranking, since the reasons for somebody's downfalls in the competition have been different. They can be solely because of their weak challenge performance, but they can also be because of mistreatment or systemic disadvantage that for example, Latina queens, non-femme queens, or any queens that the show does not want to spotlight and does get brownie points for in a given season have. Focusing only on the 14 regular seasons, I will be mentioning every Fall from Grace and explaining it a little. The name Fall from Grace is a little harsh, so just know that here it's used, let's say, artistically and not literally. If you enjoy what I do here, you can, of course, like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to support me even further, you can support me on Patreon, like all of these lovely people here. Thank you all. Starting from the beginning, we have Chanel's track record. Chanel started out the season well, first person in the workroom, going safe, high. So we had our eyes on her. After that, her placements are as follows. Bottom two, low, high eliminated. The one high placement is an exception to the rules, so she's still valid for this list. What's funny about Chanel is that she came into the season on the highest horse possible that Beyonce, I think, borrowed for the Renaissance photo shoot. And so she got into her head quite too much and did not let her talents really shine through. Queens like Ongina, Nina, and Bibi were versatile too, but they did not have to tell you that, nor did they get upset over being lower placing than other queens unlike Chanel. Chanel had to remind you how great she was, so the show said BONK, you're low. We're going four seasons ahead into season five, where we have two examples. First, Ivy Winters, who started out the season with three high and one safe placement. She then went low when low eliminated. Again, that one win is an exception to the rule. Ivy is one of the most talented and nicest queens we've ever had on the show, but she's not loud and in your face, so the show, of course, never saw her as the winner. She was mostly an accessory to Jinx's story, having to be eliminated in order for Jinx to win the season. Now, Jinx probably would have won the season regardless, but Ivy's elimination as her only ally made it also much better of a story. Ivy kinda struggled when it came to comedy, and ending up in the bottom two with Alyssa Edwards is more or less a death sentence, unless you're Tatiana or Coco Montrese. Another queen from season 5 is Linacia Sparks. Chanel, Ivy, and Linacia for all-stars when. Linacia, from the moment she came into the workroom, had me by the ball. Linacia, from the moment that she came into the workroom, showed that she was fantastic. She started the season with a high placement and a win. If Drag Race gives you a win in the first two or three episodes, or at least a spotlight in the high placements there, you know that you're doing something right, since the producers believe in you to carry the season and retain viewers. Weirdly enough, the show kind of just soured on Linacia after that. Of course, she did have mediocre performances in the kids TV show, thing, challenge, whatever, and snatch game. But those challenges are very comedy based. Comedy in English, English is not Linacia's first language, she's at a disadvantage, I cannot talk about this again. Next, from season 6, we have three queens. First, Milk and Trinity K. Bonet. Both of them had a similar start of placing high in the first two episodes, and then they started to place lower. Milk, on one hand, was not appreciated for her avant-garde outlook on drag at least for drag race standards, of course. And comedy was not her strongest suit, so she was out by episode 5. Trinity K. Bonet, on the other hand, did have a bit of a comeback in the competition, but she did get eliminated right after that. Actually, both Trinity and Milk started the season as being possible winner contenders, but being on kind of opposite sides of the spectrum. Trinity is very classic drag, great performing, while Milk is the construction of gender in drag and an avant-garde, not always polished look. Trinity started doubting herself as the season went on, really only being able to do well when she got the encouragement from another fantastic queen in Bianca Del Rio. Talent recognizes talent. 
The third queen that goes onto this list from season six is Bendela Krem. I covered the Dayless Time on Drag Race in my The Favoritism of Bendela Krem video, and some people misinterpret my favoritism or mistreatment videos as if somebody gets favoritism, I don't like them and I'm butthurt, or if somebody gets mistreatment, I love them and I'm just butthurt. No, I love Dayla, she's one of the most talented people we've ever seen on the show, but season six basically spelt out the fact that Dela was kept because of her talents, even when she was in the bottom three or that one time in bottom two. That's the story that she got in the season. A strong competitor who had one glorious fuck up was given a second chance and she could not live up to the expectations. I mean, she did live up to them on All Stars 3, but yeah, as I've said, I've already covered all of that. Next, we have a queen from season seven, but I'm going to group her with one queen from season 10 and another from season 14. These three queens have the distinction of starting a possible, promising, good run. Not a winner run, but a top four run consistently solid performance and all of that. And then they went on to becoming lip sync assassins of their seasons. We're talking about Jade and Dior Fierce, All Stars When, Cameron Michaels, All Stars When, and Georges, High School Graduation When. Jaden is maybe the weakest of the three regarding her highs as she never got a win but she did have consistent safe and high placements. Cameron had this funny track record of being safe and then high and then that repeating four times. Once she exchanged that safe placement with a low placement and another time the high placement was a win. So it all balanced itself out in the end. Georges, a uh, clear production favorite, was given a win, but overall, I'll admit it, she did have some good challenge performances and she ended the season with five bottom two placements. Can I be honest? She was not elimination worthy in that bottom three lip sync. But yeah, it was her time to go. Next up, we have Miss Fame from season seven. Listen, I've told about many people in this video that I want to see them on All Stars. But this one, ooh, I want her on All Stars. I want her on Versus the World. I want her to become a family vlogger, have her in the Queen of the Universe, literally anything. I don't think you guys understand how much I love Miss Fame. Now, her highs in season seven weren't that long. She was high only twice during the entire season, and those two happened in episodes 1 and 3, while in episode 2 she was low, with the format changing to save her from the bottom two and a possible, well, a possible, definite elimination. However, her story is what puts her here. In the fashion challenge, she thrived, losing out by just a hair to Violet, resulting in Miss Fame having to be eliminated in order to show just how much unlike her Violent is. Even though I I think we can all agree that Fame is funnier and more likable than Violent. After her start, she mostly was safe or low, being kept out of the bottom two, especially in the Snatch Game episode, that sacrificed Max for the sake of keeping Fame. I am a little sad that she was eliminated in the John Waters challenge, because, to be honest, she was better than Pearl and Violent there. But of course, Pearl had the plot armor, plus she's hot out of drag, and Violent was more confrontational and thus better TV. Season 10 gives us another queen here with Mayhem Miller. Mayhem came onto Drag Race as the queen with... I would say the most expectations put on her to do well. She auditioned for every season, she's a legend in LA, she came in and she won in episode 1, and then was high in episode 2, and then was in the bottom 2 safe and eliminated. Being a good drag queen does not always translate into being a good drag race competitor, sadly. There are too many factors to think about, and they seem to have all been against Mayhem. It's a shame, she really did lose herself because of the set expectations. However, she did go on to win the Hollisley Spectacular, so... Speaking of expectations, we can actually talk about another queen that had expectations put on her coming back into the competition. That person being... Vanji. Eureka had them too, but she did quite well on season 10, so obviously she's not going to be on the list. Vanji on season 11, though. Great start. She was high safe and then high again, with some great looks to boot. She could have been a contender for the crown. And then her placements went as follows low, safe, low, safe, low, bottom two, bottom two, and not high placement, and then elimination. It seemed like Vanjie used up all of her good drag in the beginning, her relationship with Brooke gave the producers a reason to boot her right before the finale, and her challenge performances... well... 
there were always better performing people. Obviously, placements on Drag Race mean nothing in real life. Vanji got her own reality show, which to some people is a success. So I don't think she's worried about being here. Last queen I want to mention is one of my favorites. She's a recent rule girl and it's Olivia Lux or Liv Lux Miyaki Mugler. Liv started out season 13 first as one of the chosen six, the winner circle, the queens that the production knew they wanted to push until the end or to a certain point at least. Then after the first five competitive episodes, Liv dominated the competition alongside Simone. I remember watching that and while I was exhausted of the season already, seeing the two of them just being excellent weekly made me so excited. And then Liv went safe, low, bottom two, safe, low, eliminated. The thing with her is that she tried to produce herself. She came in with a character in drag that is different to her out of drag character. And instead of having the production create a narrative for her, she wanted to make one herself, which the production and the judges of course did not take lightly and she was criticized for it. I get why that happened. It can come off as a little phony and it does disrupt the narrative of the season. And so a possible contender for the crown ended up being one of the queens that I was watching and liking, but wanting her to get eliminated because her portrayal just kept being worse and worse. And that's it, that's the video. This actually was not the video that I planned on making for this week, but the suggestion was too good to pass on. Also, I was curious, even if the results were a little lackluster. If you liked the video, again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm fighting for my life against the algorithm, and thank you for watching.